Hi, let us proceed with our discussions in terms of the installation procedures for the straight gauge. In the previous videos, we have mentioned about the surface treatment, installations of strain gauge, as well as using additive to attach the strain gauge to the test specimen. Our next step now is to check the attachment of the strain gauge. These are the procedures for the checking of the attached strain gauge. First, we need to do the visual inspections of the attached gauge. For your information, there is no explicit criteria for visually determining whether a strain gauge is correctly installed. This will be very much dependent on your judgment as well as your experience. You may observe the symptoms that indicates the installation of strain gauge may be defective and if you found that the installation is defective, you will need to reinstall the strain gauge. The strain gauge that was initially installed to the test specimen will have to be removed and it cannot be used anymore. As you cannot guarantee the accuracy of the used strain gauge if the strain gauge is being reused. Next is about the deviations from the positioning marks. The positioning marks are produced to indicate the exact locations you need to install the strain gauge. During installations of the strain gauge, you will need to match the measurement axis against the positioning marks. It must be as accurate as possible. Now a simple rule of thumb, a deviation of 5 degree from the main directions of the strain gauge will lead to 1% reductions in sensitivities. This 5 degree is referring to this angle which is the angle measured against the main directions axis. The bigger the angle, the less it is sensitive to the measurements of the strength. The most accurate measurement, it will be with zero degree angle. That means, whichever strength occur on the test specimen is effectively and directly measured by the strength gauge. You may use this as the guideline for you to do the decisions whether you need to reinstall the strain gauge. There are two modes of deviations. The first one is referring to the deviations from the positioning marks, which is this one. The acceptable range for these deviations from the position marks it will be less than plus minus 1 mm. Referring to the figure here, the positioning marks is this. However, the strain gauge is installed slightly in front of the positioning marks. Now, the acceptable range here will need to be limited within 1 mm differences. Another one, it will be the deviations from the measurement axis. This is quantified in terms of the angle. You have the main axis here. If the strain gauge is not properly installed, it may be slightly rotated. That gives you an angle of certain degree. Now, if you observe, there is slight deviations from the actual installations of the strain gauge. You may use the protector to measure the angle. The acceptable range for the angle, it will be less than 3 degree. Beyond 3 degree, the strain gauge will need to be removed and to be reinstalled with a new strain gauge. Theoretically, you will have to fulfill the requirements of both of this to yield you accurate results. Next, you will need to look into the conditions of the adhesive coverage. See if there is any gap within the adhesive coverage 
under and around the gauge base. This is also important. You need to ensure the adhesive is able to convey the strain from the test specimen to the strain gauge effectively. Now, if the adhesive is not properly bonding to the strain gauge, the strain as developed within the test specimen may not be able to be effectively conveyed to the strain gauge. This will result in inaccurate measurements of the strain gauge. Looking at the figure here, this represents uh, good conditions for the adhesive. As for this, it is not acceptable. The adhesive did not cover here. You will need to make sure the adhesive is spreading uniformly under the gauge base. Make sure all parts of the gauge base are being properly bonded to ensure the sensitivity of the strain gauge. Then you will need to check the bubble or soiling under the gauge base. Referring to the figure here, this is the test specimen. This is the layer of adhesive. The top two layers here represent the strain gauge. This is the gauge base and this is the grid of the strain gauge. If you have a bubble or any dust underneath the strain gauge, this may affect the quality of the adhesive to bond with the strain gauge. And because of the existence of impurity as well as the air bubble underneath the strain gauge, the measurements become inaccurate. You will have to be careful with it. This is about the visual checking of the attached gauge. The ultimate purpose is by looking into the accuracy in terms of the positions that you install the strain gauge. Checking the quality of bonding by using the adhesive, whether it is sufficiently covered under the gauge base, or if there are any impurities or bubbles that affect the quality of the bonding of the adhesive. Next, we need to also check the resistance of the strain gauge after the installations. You may use a tester or digital resistance meter to measure the resistance across the strain gauge in order to check the conditions of the strain gauge. You know that the principles of using strain gauge is by quantifying the changes in terms of the resistance. Therefore, before you connect the strain gauge to the data logger, you will need to determine whether the strain gauge is functioning well. Now connect the tester or digital resistance meter to the strain gauge. It should give you the strain gauge resistance as per specified on the package of the strain gauge. Let's say now the strain gauge that you are using is 120 ohm. When you connect to the tester here, it should also give you 120 ohm. Otherwise, the strain gauge may be defective. Another thing that you need to check, it will be the insulation resistance. This is particularly when the strain gauge is installed onto the metal. Theoretically, the strain gauge should be properly insulated from the test specimen so that the circuit within the strain gauge is stand alone and not being interfered by the test specimen which may also be electric conductor. Theoretically, if you install the strain gauge properly, there shouldn't be currents flowing between the strain gauge to the test specimen. What you can do now is Connect one terminal of the tester to the strain gauge while another terminal to be placed close to the strain gauge on the test specimen. The resistance 
must be relatively high in order to prevent the currents flowing between the string gauge and the test specimen. It was said that the normal strength measurements require an insulation resistance of 500 mega ohm. Next is about the instrument used to check the strength gauge resistance. Use the measuring equipment capable of measuring the resistance as small as 0 0.1 ohm. The sensitivity it will be 0 0.1 ohm. The tester can also be used to check the connections conductivity in the intermediate check in order to detect the soldering defects or damage of the string gauge. In this case, you are checking the damage of the string gauge. If the measured resistance is equal to the gauge resistance as specified in the package of the string gauge, you know that the string gauge is in good condition. Next, you will need to check the insulation resistance. Now, if the resistance meets the requirement of 500 mega ohm, you know that the circuit will only flow within the string gauge without flowing into the test specimen. This one is meant to check the proper conditions of the installations of the string gauge. Now, if your string gauge involves connecting with the terminals and lead wire, there will be soldering of the gauge lead to the connecting terminal and then soldering the connecting terminals to the lead wire. You may use the tester again to check the connections conductivity from the lead wire to the string gauge and then back to the lead wire. The resistance given by the measurement shall be equal to the resistance of the string gauge itself. Next is about the instrument used to check installation resistance. Do not use ohmmeter such as merger that apply the voltage more than 50 volt as this can damage the string gauge. You will need to be careful with that. Also, some strength meter may have functions to check for insulation resistance.